this video is for 8-2 factoring by GCF and here's a reminder of how your your paper should be set up for notes for this section. How do you factor a polynomial using the GCF method? So I gave you a list of the four methods we're going to cover in chapter 8 and this is the first one and it's going to be using GCF. Just a reminder that this is for a section 8-2 of your whole textbook. First, I'd like you to recall the distributive property. A, B, A multiplied by B plus A multiplied by C is the same thing as taking the A out and then you have B plus C. So this is actually the direction we're going to go in. Uh, normally, you were given something in this form and you were told to distribute, so you distribute here and here and you would get this answer. Well, now we're going to go the other way. You're going to have AB plus AC. You're going to find out what they have in common. Divide both monomials by that. And then you'll be able to factor out the A. And then have just a B plus C left over. Notice that the A's go away. All you have left is B plus C. So the distributive property allows you to factor out the GCF of the terms in a polynomial. And that's exactly what we're going to do through two examples for this video. A polynomial is fully factored when it is written as a product of monomials and polynomials whose terms have no common factors other than one. So to, exp to understand all this information here, I have a table for you. So here is a fully factored uh, polynomial. Notice how the 2 is taken out. You just have 3x minus 4. Notice inside the parentheses, the 3x and the 4 have nothing in common. So you can't take anything out, and that is going to be your final answer. But look at the second part. This one is not fully factored. Look at the 3x and the 4x. Do they have a common term? Well, yes, they do. Their common term is x. So you can actually take out another x term, and you would get 2x on the outside, and inside you'd have 3 minus 4, and that would be fully factored, but not fully simplified. Of course, you can simplify inside the parentheses, but it is fully factored. Now, now that I've explained when a polynomial is fully factored, and I also explained how to find the GCF, now I'm going to actually use the GCF to factor a polynomial. So our first example we have here is 2x, oops, excuse me, 2x squared minus 4. So you have to first find the GCF. That is always done first. And to find the GCF, you can take out all of the, um, the prime factors. So this one has a 2 in common, and that's it. Notice that they don't have any, there's no x terms with the 4. So all they do, what is common between 2 and 4 is 2. So the GCF is going to be 2. <coughs> so now, you guys, I'm going to show you how to factor this using the GCF of 2. And I'm going to show you a way that a lot of my students like to use in the past years. So we're going to take the polynomial 2x squared minus 4, and I'm going to divide both by the GCF. So in this case, it's going to be both by 2. When I do that, I'm going to write 2 on the outside of parentheses. So because I'm dividing by 2 and because 2 is the GCF, I'm going to write it on the outside of parentheses. And now I'll do my math to reduce what's up here. So I'll take out the 2s, and I get x squared. And then negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And notice that x squared and negative 2 have no common factors. So I can't use GCF to factor it. And this is the farthest I can go. And it's my answer. And at the bottom of the screen, I have a check. And the answer already displayed, of course. So now I'll check to multiply 2, the both terms. And when I do that, I get my original answer. Therefore, it checks off. Okay, here's our last example, and there's no check for it, but I will go ahead and um, demonstrate how to factor this polynomial by GCF. First of all, notice the instructions. They say the factor, and you have to think of the four factoring methods, and the only one you know right now is GCF. So we're going to first look for the GCF of these three terms. We have three terms here. So let's first look at the numbers. Right, We have 8, 4, and 16. What number is the highest number that can go into all three numbers evenly. Well, 8 
uh, can have four or two, four can have two or four, 16 can have four or two or eight. And the, the highest one that can go into all three evenly is four. So that is the first part of our GCF is four. Then you got to look at the exponents. You have three X's here, two X's here, and one X here. So looking at all three terms, how many X's do they have in common? Well, if there's only one here, then they're only going to have one in common, right? This one has at least one, and this term has at least one X. So our uh, GCF for all three terms is 4X. Now that I have the GCF, I am going to uh, use it to factor. So I'm going to take my three terms, 8X to the third, minus 4X squared, minus 16X, and I'm going to divide all terms by the GCF, which is 4X. So divide by 4x, divide by 4x, divide by 4x. And when I do that, that goes on the outside of my parentheses for my final response. And now I'll use division to help me reduce. Here, 8 divided by 4 is going to give me 2. And then look at the exponents. Notice I'm going to have to subtract them. And this is a review of Chapter 7, Exponent Properties. I told you guys all this stuff is going to come back. So notice that we're going to subtract the exponents. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So we get x squared here. The 4s reduce the 1, so they cancel out. Now we have x2 over 1. And remember, you subtract the exponents, so this becomes minus x. And then here, we get uh, 16 over 4. That reduces to 4 on top and 1 on the bottom. The x's reduce to 1. They go away. So all I have left is a minus 4. And here's my final answer. Notice that nothing inside the parentheses has common terms, right? The 2x squared has nothing in common with the x, has nothing in common with the 4. So we can't factor out anymore. And this is our factored form. So how do you check your answer? Take a minute, think about it, and then I'd like you to check your answer. And if you forgot, rewind your video and look at the previous example because I showed you how to check.